Greetings, brothers and sisters. The Methodist Church, St. Lucia's Circuit, welcomes you to our virtual worship for today, Sunday, October 24th, 2021. We wish to extend congratulations to all those celebrating a birthday, wedding anniversary, or any other special occasion. Special congratulations to Sister Cherise Kajada, along with her parents, Brother Romal and Sister Nicole Kajada of the Forestier Congregation. Cherise was the recipient of the La Rose Award for Outstanding Performance at the St. Joseph's Convent graduation. We continue in every way possible to pray and to support our children and youth in their academic pursuits and Christian nurturing. We wish to express so heartfelt sympathy to Sister Christine Marcial on the passing of her brother. We pray that God's comforting hand will be with the family during this time. We also remember in our prayers all those who are mourning the loss of loved ones, as well as those of our fellowship who are sick, housebound, and or heavy laden. The circuit's midweek service continues this and every Wednesday at the Castries Chapel from 12 to 1 p.m. This week's service will be conducted by Reverend Yard. Please be reminded that in keeping with the confinement of the COVID-19 protocols, we cannot exceed 50 persons. As we continue to deepen, broaden, and strengthen our spirituality, we encourage you to join us for Bible study this and every Wednesday at 7 p.m. via Zoom. Confirmation class will commence in the month of November. All those youth and adults who are not yet confirmed are welcome to join. Application forms can be obtained from the church office. I wish to remind us that in-person gathering has resumed in all four congregations, Castries and Grosile at 8 a.m., Forestier and Hukasson Brown Memorial at 10.30 a.m. We take this opportunity to thank you for your faithful and generous giving. Your tithes, offerings, and donations can be deposited to the Republic Bank St. Lucia, account number 950-1000-59919 or visit the church office Monday to Friday from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. We do appreciate the efforts of everyone who has contributed to the successful outcome of our worship experience today. May God continue to bless us all. And I leave with us a quote for this week by Charles Wesley. To serve the present age, my calling to fulfill, O oh, may it all my pause engage to do my master's will. Let us now ready ourselves for worship. Good morning, brothers and sisters. We are indeed privileged to be in God's presence this morning, and for that blessing, we give him praise. Come, let us worship the Lord. Praise the Lord. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his steadfast love endures forever. We begin our worship by singing hymn number 46, I am the way. We continue with, with our call. See? 
strength, my friend. Hosanna, you walk the sea, my friend. We're gonna sail to victory. sail to victory. We continue with our call to worship. We will read responsibly. responsibly. Clap your hand, all ye people. Shout to God with loud songs of joy. For the Lord the Most High is awesome, a great king over all the earth. Sing praises to God. Sing praises. Sing praises to our king. Sing praises. God is king over the nation. God sits in his holy throne. Your name, O oh God, like the praises, which is the ends of the earth. Your right hand is filled with victory. We now sing. We now sing hymn number 339. Stand up, stand up for Jesus.
Reverend Anyard for the prayers of adoration, confession, and thanksgiving. Let us go to God in prayer. Loving God, indeed it's a privilege that we can come once again to worship you in spirit and in truth. It's a privilege, O oh God, that we can meet once again in the chapel to worship and to glorify your name. Once again, O oh God, we can come together to fellowship and to call upon your name, Most High. Today, O oh God, we gather to worship you in spirit and in truth. We come boldly before your throne of grace because we know, dear God, that only because of your grace we are here. Only because, O oh God, of your grace you have kept watch over us. And today, O oh God, we just want to worship you in spirit and in truth. We want you, O oh God, to come and take your rightful place in every heart bowing before you. We want you, O oh God, to lift as we lift your name on high. You alone, O oh God, will be glorified. And so we call you King of kings and Lord of lords. Help us, O oh God, as we stand, to stand only for you. Help us, O oh God, as we sing, to sing only for you. So receive all the glory. Receive all the power and strength in our own way, O oh God, as we give it up to you. You alone are the desires of our hearts. Loving God, your people are once again grateful and we adore you in spirit and in truth. We invite your holy presence, O oh God, to take place in every space, O oh God, those who are listening, those who are in this chapel, O oh God, and wherever they are. May you visit them at this time, O oh God, and help them as they rejoice in your presence to know that you are God and will be God for them also. This morning, O oh God, as a people, we know, dear God, that we have messed up. We know, dear God, that we have done things we ought not to have done. We know, dear God, many times we have turned our backs from your instructions, from someone speaking to us, from, O oh God, us telling others of your good news. And so we are sorry. We ask, O oh God, and we repent that you cleanse us and wash us whiter than snow, creating us, O oh God, a heart only to praise you and to worship you, and as we fellowship with others, to let them know that Jesus Christ is Lord. And many times, dear God, we fail to tell others of your love. May you forgive us. And so, O oh God, as we come as a church, Forgive us for the many times when the church failed to speak out. Forgive us many times when the church is silent, O oh God, in matters, in domestic affairs. Forgive us many times, O oh God, when in our neighborhood we fail to reach out and touch. And so we pray that as you create in us a heart, help us to be conscious of the fact that you are always watching over us. So may you give us, O oh God, another chance of bringing, O oh God, your name alive. And so we confess and we pray for your forgiveness. Loving God, we thank you for life. The opportunity of saying how great thou art is indeed a privilege, O oh God, where Christians throughout this St. Lucia breath and length are lifting their hands and rejoicing in your presence to know that indeed, O oh God, you have heard our request. To know indeed, O oh God, that you have answered our prayers. To know, dear God, indeed you have given us a sound mind that we can come and so we come to say thank you, God, for what you have done. 
the doors are open, whosoever will may come. This morning, we thank you. We thank you for those gathered here right now and those who are listening far and near. We thank you for the opportunity you have given unto them to log in and to hear of your good news. We thank you, O oh God, for this privilege being given to us. And so we want to say, take your praise, O oh God, as we bless your mighty and powerful name. There is no one else like you, O oh God. And so we thank you for being in our midst. We thank you for your son, Jesus. We thank you, O oh God, for him spilling his blood on Calvary. We thank you for him paying that full price, O oh God, that bought us back and bring us to life. And so this morning, we are all alive and well. We glorify your name, and therefore we thank you. Spirit of the living God, we thank you for being in our midst. Spirit of the living God, we thank you for being in the spaces of all those who are listening. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh. We thank you for life. We thank you for this opportunity. This we pray in and through your precious name with thanksgiving. Amen. As we go into the ministry of the word, let us pray the collect appointed for today. Almighty and eternal God, you have kindled the flame of love in the hearts of the saints. Grant to us the same faith and the power of love that as we rejoice in their triumphs, we may be sustained by the example and fellowship through Jesus Christ, your son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forevermore. Amen. We will now turn to the epistles as we turn to our Bibles, Hebrew chapter 7, verse 23 to 28. Furthermore, the former priests were many in number because they were prevented by death from continuing in office. But he holds his priesthood permanently because he continues forever. Consequently, he is able for all time to save those who approach God through him, since he always lives to make intercession for them. For it is fitting that he, we should have such a high priest, holy, blameless, undefiled, separated from sinners, and exalted above the heavens. Unlike the others, High priest, he has no, unlike the other high priests, he has no need to offer sacrifices day after day, first for his own sins and then for those of the people. This he did once for all when he offered himself. For the law appoints a high priest as high priest those who are subject to weakness. But the word of Oath, which came later than the law, appoints a, a son who have been made perfect forever. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We now call on Reverend Anne, who will continue. Brothers and sisters, let us kindly stand for the reading of the gospel found in Mark chapter 10, verse 46 to 52. Glory to you, O God. The healing of blind Bartimaeus. They came to Jericho as he and his disciples and a large crowd were leaving Jericho. Bartimaeus, son of Timaeus, a blind beggar, was sitting by the roadside. When he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to shout out and say, Jesus, 
son of David, have mercy upon me. Many sternly ordered him to be quiet, but he cried out even more loudly, Son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus stood still and said, Call him here. And they called the blind man, saying to him, Take heart, get up, he is calling you. So throwing off his cloak, he sprang up and came to Jesus. Then Jesus said to him, What do you want me to do for you? The blind man said to him, My teacher, let me see again. Jesus said to him, Go, your faith has made you well. Immediately, he regained his sight and followed him on the way. Brothers and sisters, the gospel of Christ. Let us continue as we sing the hymn of preparation, My Heart is Fixed, Eternal God. Brothers and sisters, Christian friends, you have just declared it, Christ for me, Christ for me. And if you have declared it, I want to ask us a question. What do you want next? What is it do you want? What is it is going on in your life? that you need this Christ? What is it that is troubling you that you have come to realize that is only Christ you need today? Like the man in the scripture today, this um, gospel reading says, Jesus asked him, what do you want? He says, I want to see again. Let us pray. Loving God, you are the God of miracles and the power. You are the God of yesterday and today. We believe, O oh God, that you are indeed mighty. And we declare today, O oh God, 
that you are in charge of our lives. No matter how rough the path may be, you are always there for us. And so this morning we come, believing by faith that all will be well, because in our situations, we want to turn it around. And so, as you ask us what you want us to do, what you want, what we want you to do, we claim and declare only Christ we need. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Our scripture reading in Mark 10 verse 47 says, When he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to shout out and say, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. And in verse 49, B says, call him here. He asked, what do you want me to do for you? The blind man who we heard is a beggar said to him, my teacher, let me see again. Jericho was a popular resort city rebuilt by Herod the Great in the Judean desert. Not far from Jordan River crossing, Jesus walking along ahead as the disciples were following after. As they reached Jericho, a blind man, a beggar named Bartimaeus was sitting beside the road. When he heard that Jesus was near, he began to shout out, Jesus, have mercy on me. Jesus heard him and stopped and said, Tell him to come. Bartimaeus pulled off his coat, jumped up, and came to Jesus. Jesus asked him, What do you want me to do for you? His response was, Teacher, I want to see again. You can just imagine the excitement in Bartimaeus' heart to know he has received that privilege of talking to Jesus, of asking Jesus for a request. I believe that Bartimaeus was playing with the Holy Spirit in his mind that he knew of a fact that Jesus was on his way coming because he listened carefully to the news of the others. You see, people in times past with those illnesses were treated as though they had committed sin. They were like nobody. And even some people yelled at him, Bartimaeus, be quiet. Shut up. Beggars then were in that Jericho area, a common sight in almost all towns, since most occupations required physical labor. So anyone with a crippling disease or a handicap was at a severe disadvantage and was usually forced to beg. But in Leviticus 25, verse 35 to 38, reminds us that orphans, widows, and handicaps were most likely to be poor and unable to help themselves. Hence, the responsibility to care for the poor was critical. Since blindness was considered a curse from God for sin, Jesus turned it around and healed him, as prophesied in Isaiah 29. Out of their gloom and darkness, the blind will see my plans. 
The fact that Bartimaeus called out to Jesus shows that he recognized Jesus as the Messiah. Bartimaeus believed that this was the Messiah, the Son of the living God. Only Jesus, Bartimaeus believed, can solve his problem. He knows something that the disciples closest to Jesus don't yet know who Jesus really is. And so Bartimaeus' faith in the Messiah brought him healing. Jesus said to him, your faith has made you whole. This is an example for us to follow Christians. Is immediate healing propelled him to follow Jesus. Brothers and sisters, when Jesus shows up for you, you need to receive what he has in store for you. When Jesus shows up for you, you need to let go. You need to let the world know that Jesus is the Savior yesterday, today and forevermore because he has redeemed you. He has saved you. He has set you free. It says, come see a man. You need to let others know, Christian friends, that there is a man, a man of power, a man of all authority. Come see what Jesus has done for me. Come see this man give me vision once again. You may not have the physical eyesight problem like Zacchaeus, like Bartimaeus, but whatever it is, I ask you to call upon him to set you free. Bartimaeus recognizes Jesus and responds to his call. Jesus says, call him to me. He knows that Jesus had the authority and the power to heal. This is what Bartimaeus desired was to be healed. He does not want pity. He does not want hand out. He wants a sight to see again. Imagine someone like us with a good 50-50 vision. Suddenly get blind. It puts you in a state of distress. Because seeing the beautiful trees and the plants and walking into the stores and doing your own shopping and reading your word for yourself, now you have lost all those privileges. You see the rich man, as the words the Bible says, wanted eternal life and he had to sell all his positions. James and John wanted to be one on the right and one on the left in the glory, according to Mark 10, verse 37. But blind Bartimaeus, by the roadside, wants only mercy. There's a song that says, mercy says no. But mercy is saying yes today to, Bar today to Bartimaeus. Let me see again, Lord. Have mercy upon me. The question is, what do you want from Jesus today, listening friends? What are you asking Jesus for? He is in your space. He is right next to you. Speak to him. He can hear you. He sees your cry. He knows the decision that you're about to make. And he wants to help you. I encourage you, believe, have faith that all things can be possible. Jesus asked Bartimaeus the question plainly. And Bartimaeus said, teacher, I want to see again. Do you want to see again? What has been hindering your vision from what you have been going through? You want God to make it in plain view for you? I say call upon him. Let him know your request. Make it known to him like Bartimaeus. 
knows that his problem was a big one due to his conditions. He had been struggling and knows that begging was not the lifelong answer. He wants to get out of poverty and so receiving alms does not put an end to the main problem. And Bartimaeus seek help and he knew or he knows that no one else can help him, only God. He knows deep within the main cause of his blindness needs a fundamental change and he understands only Jesus can do it. The song says he can do it again. Yes, he can do it again. What about you today? However, he has one setback. That is the disciples standing between him and Jesus. Just think for a moment, who is standing between you and God right now? Who is stopping you from making that decision? Whose actions in or out of the church is discouraging you? You need to make that decision today. Receive the change in your life for the better. Get to the cause of the problem and seek God for yourself. The very people who want to be closest to Jesus are the same people who are keeping others from him. Just where you are, call out to Jesus. He will stop and listen. Just as you're at your breaking point, let go and let God step in. Bartimaeus' position Bartimaeus positioned himself, even though the crowd was large, but his voice was in the air of Jesus, and he sounded that voice. Jesus stands still and looks beyond the crowd around him and single out this blind beggar. This is the powerful Jesus you and I serve today. Someone that sees beyond. Someone that sees in the stillness of the night. Someone who sees in our darkness. Jesus makes the way for one more. And that was Bartimaeus. I want to ask today, is that one more you today? Jesus is looking beyond what you have done to heal you, to restore and to set you free. Psalm 23 says, the Lord is my shepherd. He leads, he directs, he restores, he protects, and he guides, he sustains. I want to believe that Bartimaeus was restored by the power of Jesus setting him free. Secondly, you need to invite others. He is calling you. Jesus said in verse 49, tell him to come. Jesus is reminding the disciples that following means inviting others to come follow too. It is not a one-man show. When you come to Jesus, your mission and my mission is to invite others to come taste and see this powerful, mighty man can heal and set free. And therefore, there are many on the, the margin that must be invited. And so you and I need to invite them to come because Jesus wants them to come too. It is to welcome others to join the group. It is for others to come in and taste and see that there is room for all and all our responsibility is to lead them, not to shut them up. It is to bring those outside to come inside. 
In what ways are you blind to God's presence and his work in and around your life? Is your vision clear? How can you begin to see Jesus? Do you, do you have boldness to humble yourself like Bartimaeus and say, Lord, help me see again. Lord, remove this condition that has been plaguing me for a number of years. Lord, I am going through so much and I need you in my situation. Brothers and sisters, whatever that is, humble yourself. Whisper a prayer. If you want to shout it, shout it out. For God hears the secret of the heart and he hears the loudness of your voice. When you begin to trust God, he brings you to the root of your problem and fixes it. This is the God you and I serve. Therefore, faith in God changes things permanently. I want to say, as you claim faith today, claim that God can make the change and only he can make that change for you. Bartimaeus was pro promoted from sitting by the roadside to walking on the road with Jesus. Brothers and sisters, isn't that a promotion? Hallelujah. There is room for more. Jesus invites you. He wants to change your position. He wants to change your situations. He wants to change the circumstance that you are facing right now. And therefore, in closing, Bartimaeus had a need. And he was determined that no one would stop him. And so he shouted, Jesus, son of David, have mercy. He used his voice to call out Jesus, the only one to solve the problem. He was conscious of the fact that the disciples were in his way. When Jesus heard and saw his need, he beckoned Bartimaeus to come. What about you today? Is your day? What are you experiencing? Your time to be set free is now. Allow no one to prevent you. Allow no one in your past or none in your past to condemn you. Like Bartimaeus, he needed no handout. He needed only Jesus, and he received him. Do you want Jesus today? Today is your turning point. State what you want from Jesus, and he will fix it for you. You want to see again. What do you want? In the name of the Father and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us go to God in prayer as we reflect on our theme for, day, for today. What do you want? I want to see again. Loving God, you're the God who heals, you're the God who delivers. You're the God who restores. And so this morning we come believing in faith that you can do exactly what you promise us. You can do exactly what Bartimaeus experienced. You, dear God, can do it again because you have done it already. And so this morning, we claim it in the name of Jesus. We claim it that every knee shall bow and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is King and Lord over all. That Jesus Christ is the only problem solver. That Jesus Christ is the only one that can fix it. 
that Jesus Christ is the only one who can hear when we cry in the stillness of the night. And so, as we reach out, help us to reach out in faith, believing that all is well and all will be possible. As you restore, O oh God, our sight, our finances, whatever our situation may be, we claim it in Jesus' name. Amen. At this time, I would like to just say a short word of encouragement to our children. Boys and girls, young people, a pleasant good morning to you. For those who are in the chapel, I ask you to draw closer, while as those at home, you may be seated sitting by your mom, your dad, your granny. Just listen, for there is a message for you. Have you ever seen any one of your pairs blind or cannot see? How does it feel to know that you have your sight and the pair in your class have no sight or has no sight? What are some of the things you feel that you can do to reach out to him or to her? I want to tell you that when you receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, he gives you the power and authority to even do things that you boys and girls don't even know that you can do. And so this morning, I want to say to you that what you ask for, Jesus can give it to you or will give it to you because he knows your heart. He knows that you are in the business of helping others. Like Bartimaeus, in the story we read in our scripture, Bartimaeus needed Jesus' help. And your friend may need your help, probably to cross the road, to go to the bathroom, to get his snack, and to do many things. So I encourage you, as you are in your classroom or wherever you are in your community and you know of someone who does not have his physical sight, your responsibility is to help that person just like Jesus helped Bartimaeus. Today, boys and girls, I know you continue school online and there are many in the special schools like the school at um, Cicero for the handicap, we need to reach out to them because many of them are unable to see what they read and so they use the braille and they can read for themselves. But I want to say those who don't have the braille, we encourage you to reach out like Jesus did and help them. I trust that you will be bold enough to reach out to those in need. Let us pray. Father God, we bring our boys and our girls before you as they joined us to help those who are in need. And so we thank you, O oh God, that you will continue to give them the boldness that they would ask uh, questions and they would help their peers. It may not be only their peers, but it may be someone in the community that needs help. And so we thank you for your spirit of wisdom and understanding as they continue to help that they will remember what you, Jesus, did for Bartimaeus. And so, dear God, even though they may not be able to help the person to receive their physical sight, the person, whether their pairs or the person in the community, will come to realize and feel the warmth 
within their spirit and will believe that even though their physical sight is not allowing them to see, they can feel the goodness of God's presence in the lives of this little boy and girl. And so this morning, we thank you for your working in their lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let us pray our prayers of intercession as we reflect on God's goodness, God's awesomeness in our presence. Loving God, we boldly come before your throne of grace. We know that you are the author and the finisher of our faith. We know, dear God, that you know our ups, our up sitting, standing, and our down sitting. We know, dear God, that you are the God of yesterday, today, and forever. And so, dear God, we lift before you all those who are unable to attend worship, those who are sick, those, dear God, who lie in bed, those, dear God, who depend on persons to help them around. We pray a special anointing upon the help, helpers. We pray, dear God, that you give them that boldness, that touch, that sense, O oh God, of tenderness that they will reflect as they treat or they touch the patients, they will feel your presence. And so, dear God, we pray for your healing virtue to pass through them, that your healing hand, O oh God, of mercy will restore them once again to their feet if it is your will. Loving God, we pray for the families in that home or the homes in which they are homebound persons. We pray, dear God, that you give them the patience, the tolerance, the wisdom and the knowledge, O oh God, to do exactly what they have to do to bring comfort to those lives. We pray, dear God, that as they continue to minister to their loved ones, that they will see Jesus healing hand upon their lives too. That they will be restored to have this closeness with you. That intimate relationship, O oh God, with you. That they will come to receive you as their Lord and Savior. Loving God, we live before you, our youth and young people. We live before you, our children. We pray, dear God, that you pour a special blessing upon them, creating them all a new heart, O oh God, to praise you with a zeal and to love you with all their heart, soul, and mind and strength. Help them, O oh God, that as they continue to do school online and those who are going back to school, may you grant unto them protection from this COVID-19 May you keep them away, O oh God, and keep them safe. Remember the teachers, O oh God, who will be doing interface learning with them. May you, dear God, grant unto them your protection. Watch over all of them, O oh God, and let them know that your hand of safety will continue to cover them. Holy Spirit, we pray that you will continue to bless our church. We thank you for this opportunity, O oh God, that we can come once again to worship you in spirit and in truth. We thank you, O oh God, once again that we can see each other's face. We thank you, O oh God, once again that we can give a nod, that we can give a smile, that someone can feel that they are needed. Someone can feel that presence of relationship with each other. Someone can feel, dear God, that indeed they are worth it. And so we pray, dear God, that you will continue to give us the wisdom as we respect the protocol, as we continue to carry out, oh God, the mandate which is given by the country or the state that we, dear God, will honor what they ask us as good citizens to do. 
so that we can protect our own lives and the lives of others. We lift before you the government of St. Lucia, the opposition leaders, leader. We pray, dear God, that you continue to speak to them. Unite them together, O oh God, that they will continue to work in unity. Let them continue to see, dear God, what you have called them to do to better the lives of each and every citizen that they are called to lead. And so, dear God, give them a heart of obedience to even say their prayers, O oh God, and to ask for your guidance as they go in their workplaces to make decisions on behalf of the people. Holy Spirit, we pray for every citizen of this country. We pray for every young man, woman, boy, girl. We pray for all the elderly. We pray for those on the streets. We pray for those who have nowhere to go. We pray for those who are hungry. Oh God, may your hand of mercy reach out and meet their needs. Loving God, whatever we fail of asking, fail not to grant it, but let your divine spirit, O oh God, take full control. Lead and guard, O oh God, each and every person where you want us to be. And let your kingdom come in our lives. This we pray in Jesus' name with thanksgiving, who taught us as a family when we pray to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Brothers and sisters, we stand and sing our closing hymn, Heaven Came Down and Glory Fill My Soul. Surely in joy after the passing. 
benediction. Now may the grace of our God, who saves us, restores us, and gives us health. We claim, O oh God, your healing at this time, that we would receive our sight. And now may the grace of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest, remain, and abide with us all, now and forevermore. Amen. Amen.